Hello and welcome to the next installment in our series on lab equipment. My name is Anupama Bowander and I will be demonstrating the use of a function generator. For this video, we will be using an HP 33120A function generator. Remember that manuals and quick start guides are available on the course webpage. The function generator is a tool that creates time varying AC signals. The output of a function generator is a voltage which changes regularly over time and it allows you to change the amplitude, the frequency, the waveform and the average voltage which is called the DC offset. In order to show you how a function generator works, we will connect the output of the function generator into the input of an oscilloscope. Turn the function generator on here, then connect the cable to the output here and we will link it to the oscilloscope like this. The function generator automatically produces a 1 kHz sine wave, which looks like this. The first thing we will change is the frequency, that is the number of full cycles of the oscillation per second. To change the frequency, push the frequency button and then change the frequency with this dial and these buttons. The left-right buttons change which digit is selected and you can use the dial or the up-down buttons to change the digit's value. You can see on the oscilloscope what changing the frequency does to the waveform. Raising the frequency makes it repeat faster and lowering the frequency slows it down. The maximum frequency for this machine is 15 megahertz. The next thing we change is the amplitude. Press the amplitude button here and then change the value in the same manner that you change the frequency. You can see here on the oscilloscope what raising and lowering the amplitude does to the waveform. When the output of the function generator is connected to a 50 ohm resistance, the maximum possible amplitude of 10 volts from peak to peak is observed. Remember, a real voltage source can be modeled as an ideal voltage source in series with an internal resistance. In this case, the internal resistance is 50 ohms. And since the load is 50 ohms as well, the ideal voltage source must be double the observed voltage or 20 volts. This is a nice example of voltage division. We can in fact increase the observed voltage by making the resistance R of the load greater than 50 ohms. However, this has limits due to capacitance C, internally or on the load. The observed signal at any time T is actually averaged over a time slot of width RC, seconds around time T. Thus, if the signal varies too quickly, we will not see the variation. That is, the oscillation amplitude will be decreased due to this RC effect. This strongly motivates one to keep R small for high frequency work. This is a lot easier than trying to eliminate C or keeping C small. 50 or 75 ohms is usually a common choice of resistance. At high frequencies, other complications can also occur, especially if the load is not connected to 50 ohms or is not matched to the source resistance. Thus, one of the sacrifices for having a standard high-frequency RF signal generator is the uncalibrated amplitude, unless you put a 50-ohm load across the output. The calibration assumes a 2 to 1 voltage divider. For our purposes, this is aggravating since we're working with loads much larger than 50 ohms, such as this oscilloscope, which ideally has infinite resistance. The manufacturer has alleviated this by allowing you to change the settings so that the amplitude is accurate for large loads like this. Press menu on. You should see a mod menu on the display. Press the right arrow key three times. You should see d system menu on the display. Press the down arrow key once. You should see out term on the display. This means output termination, which is your load resistance. Press the down arrow key again you should see 50 ohm on the display. Press the right arrow key. You should see high Z on the display. Press enter. The instrument is now set for correct operation with high impedance loads. You must go through this procedure every time you turn on the function generator or just be aware that the amplitude will be off by a factor of two. This may perhaps be easier and you can avoid RC problems. Most of the work you will be doing will use sine waves, but the function generator can produce other waves as well. These four buttons let you select the four main kinds of waves, a sine wave, a square wave, a triangle wave, and a ramp wave. Push the button to select which one you want. The last major thing to consider is the DC offset. It also has its own button here, 
and is altered with the same buttons as amplitude and frequency. The DC offset raises or lowers the average voltage which is the same as adding a constant to a mathematical function. Observe raising the offset raises the whole wave and vice versa. This unit can also produce more complicated, modulated and arbitrary waveforms and can be programmed externally, but we will not go into these complicated topics in this introductory video. That's all for the function generator. Take care with your function generator and remember, if you have any questions, always approach your lab assistant for clarification.